right, so now we're going to apply the Pythagorean identities to simplify trig expressions and to prove trig identities. So the first one that we will look at is to simplify, simplify cosine to the third power of x plus sine squared times cosine of x. Okay. And so this is kind of an interesting one when you're wanting to simplify it because it's already all in terms of sine and cosine. You don't have any other trig functions involved, so you, you have to resort to something else. And so what we notice is when you look at the two terms of this, there's a cosine of x in common to the two terms. So what we might try to do is factor out, factor out the cosine of x and see what happens. So what I'll do is I'll pull the cosine of x out. When I pull that out of my first term, it leaves behind cosine squared of x. When I pull it out of my second term, it leaves plus sine squared of x. And so this is our favorite Pythagorean identity of all. Sine squared of x plus cosine squared of the same angle x is 1. So this turns into cosine of x times 1, which is simply the cosine of x. So this sort of nasty trigonometric expression simplifies down just to be the cosine of x when you apply factoring with Pythagorean identity. Okay, let's try, let's try some proofs now. Prove. Let's say I want to prove that the quantity sine theta plus cosine theta squared equals 1 plus 2 sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so we're doing a proof now. So, so it's not quite clear what you might do on the right-hand side, so let's do our, some work on the left-hand side. So let's say the left-hand side and now we have something we can actually do on the left hand side. We can square it. So what we can do is we can multiply the sine of theta plus the cosine of theta by itself, meaning square it. And now we have to distribute all this out. So we get sine of theta times sine of theta. Well, that's sine of theta squared or sine squared of theta is how we write it. Then we get sine of theta times cosine of theta, but then we also get another sine of theta times cosine of theta. So that's two sine of theta, cosine of theta. And all the while you're doing this, you're kind of keeping an eye on your result and comparing to what you want here on the right hand side. And you can start to notice that, ooh, this is nice. I've got something that I need to get on the right hand side. So now the question is, how do I get this 1, right? So let's keep working and see what happens. Okay, so I, all I've got left now is to multiply my cosine theta by my other cosine of theta, which of course is squared, so that's cosine squared of theta. And so now when I'm comparing what I want here to what I have, you can sort of use it as a hint, right? Because I know that I've got this 2 sine theta cosine theta, and somehow everything else here has to be 1. And once you see that, you can tell that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is in fact 1. And then you just bring down your 2 sine theta cosine theta. And so now what we've done is we've proven that the left hand side equals this, which is in fact the right hand side. So that's the end of our proof. Okay. So a little algebra mixed in there with Pythagorean identity. Let's do another proof. So let's prove, let's see, how about, let's try proving, uh, I've got a typo here. Let's try proving that cotangent squared of x equals cosecant of x times the quantity cosecant x minus sine of x. And so we could certainly try to do some work on the left hand side, but it's, it's pretty simple. So let's, let's start with the more complex side, the right-hand side, and see what we can do with it. So on the right-hand side, what we could do is we could distribute my cosecant. So cosecant of x times cosecant of x is cosecant squared of x 
minus cosecant of x times sine of x. And hopefully you recognize that cosecant of x is the reciprocal of sine of x. Anytime you multiply reciprocals together, you get 1, right? You take 5 times 1 fifth, you get 1. Anytime you multiply reciprocals, you get 1. So this is the same thing as cosecant squared of x minus 1. Now, if you're having trouble seeing why this equals 1, besides the fact that they're reciprocals, then look at it. So in other words, you could write cosecant of x as 1 over sine of x times sine of x is, as a fraction, sine of x over 1. And when you multiply those, it simplifies to give you the 1. In either case, you get 1 when you multiply cosecant of x times sine of x. And now what you should realize is cosecant squared of x minus 1, well, if you recall, so recall your Pythagorean identity with that says 1 plus cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x, right? So what we could do then is we could replace our cosecant squared with 1 plus cotangent squared. So 1 plus cotangent squared of x minus 1. And now 1 minus 1 is 0, leaving behind just cotangent squared of x, which is the left-hand side. So we're done. We can conclude that the right-hand side equals the left-hand side, and that's the end of the proof. Okay. So a little algebra again with one of the Pythagorean identities. Let's do another proof. Let's try to prove that sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x equals, this is a peculiar statement, sine to the fourth of x minus cosine to the fourth of x. It appears that there's no possible way this could be true, but let's see what happens. So what we'll do is we'll start with the more complex side, the right hand side, and do some work on it. Now these are fourth powers, so we can't use the Pythagorean identities. But fourth powers are perfect squares also, and we've got subtraction. So we can factor this as a difference of two squares. Just like if you were going to factor x squared minus 9 as x plus 3 times x minus 3. It's similar to that. So the way to do it is you set up your two sets of parentheses. And the first thing we need to do is figure out how to get sine to the fourth power. Well, that's going to be sine squared of x times the sine squared of x. And then we need to figure out how to get negative cosine to the fourth of x. Well, that's going to be plus a cosine squared of x and a minus cosine squared of x. And so you can check this. If you multiply it all back out, you should end up with this guy. Okay? What we've done is we have factored, we factored this expression. Now it's squares. And in fact, we, we see this excellent result right here that sine squared x plus cosine squared x shows up, which lo and behold is 1. Also notice that the sine squared of x minus cos sorry about that. The sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x is what we're trying to get. And so what we have at this point is 1 times sine squared x minus cosine squared x, which is the left-hand side. So we've shown now that the right-hand side equals the left-hand side, and that is the end of our proof. Okay? We'll do one more. The last one is we want to prove that 2 times the cosine squared of theta minus 1 equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. All right. So this one, uh, the way I look at it is, they're both not they're both kind of messy, so it's it's difficult to know where to start. So what I do is I look at the right hand side and I've got sines and cosines, sines and cosines, and over here I've got just cosines. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to work on 
the right hand side. I'm going to work on the right hand side, and I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to rewrite my sine squared theta using cosine squared theta, and then everything on the right side will be using cosines. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, recall your Pythagorean identity that says sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And if I want to get sine squared theta by itself, then that tells me that sine squared theta is, in fact, 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I'm going to replace my sine squared theta with 1 minus cosine squared theta. When I do that, that gives me my cosine squared theta minus... 1 minus cosine squared theta, but I have to subtract the entire thing. So I replace my sine squared theta with this, and I have to subtract all of it, which means now that my negative is going to distribute, giving me cosine squared theta minus 1 plus cosine squared theta. And when I combine like terms, I've got 1 cosine squared theta plus 1 more cosine squared theta giving me 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, which is the left-hand side. So now we know that the right-hand side and the left-hand side are equal, and that's the end of the proof. So there are lots of examples using Pythagorean identities and just some very basic algebra, factoring, distributing, things like that, to, to simplify some expressions and to do some proofs.